stay cool. This is a Thor News presentation. Thor News presents Party Dance Time. Goodness gracious, great cannonballs of fire. Holy smokes, does this story seem appropriate for today? The Hubble detects giant cannonballs shooting from a star. All right, so what it looks like here is we got a sun kind of like ours, except it's a little more orange. Looks like it's got a neutron star buddy that likes to hang out in the place of the sun baby, and then it acts as defense for the sun. Shooting at bad guys? Or good guys? Or space ducks? I don't know, man. This is the scenario for plasma ejections from Pink V Hydra. Why is it always going to be Hydra? Dude, I feel like I've been sitting up in a high tree and Hydra's just been firing cannonballs at me right and left. 2016 is hell of a year. You know what I'm saying? Great balls of fire. NASA's Hubble Space Telescope has detected super hot blobs of gas, each twice as massive as the planet Mars, and they are being ejected near a dying star. Well, hey, that star didn't look like it was dying. It looked like our star, except a little more orange. They, their star's been kind of yellow, kind of blue, kind of acting funny. The plasma balls are zooming so fast through space it would take only 30 minutes for them to travel from Earth to the moon. Okay, a more important statistic would probably be how fast could these cannonballs travel from the sun to Earth? I'm guessing like a day? Phil Plate, you know, Tyson DeGrasse, an astronaut would get on the air and be like, Hey everybody, we got giant cannonballs coming in. Duck and cover. Save your ass. <sighs> I don't know, man. Sure, I'm getting my ass kicked in this superhero game. Let this carry on. This stellar cannon fire has continued once every 8.5 years for at least the past 400 years. Astronomers estimate fireballs present a puzzle to astronomers. And astronomers love puzzles. Especially dark matter puzzles, which are dorky. The fireballs present a puzzle to astronomers because the ejected material could not have been shot out by the host star. Called V-Hydre, the star is a bloated red giant. Why does it look orange, then? You guys have your color scheme all jacked up. And it's residing 1,200 light years away. I wonder if the physics of things are different that far away. Or it's just like neighborhoods and across the globe are the same as neighborhoods here. I don't think some would be different. <laughs> well, I don't know jack shit. That's why I read these articles. <sighs> okay, so when I last was following this linear article, the star was a bloated red giant. And it was residing 1,200 light years away. And it's probably shed at least half of its mass into space during these death throes. Oh, so you are telling me that there's not a slow, steady burn-off of a star? So you are telling me there's not a slow, steady decline? That once it happens, boom, it happens fast. And stars don't just live or die by themselves. They live in a star field. And in that star field are planets, and half planets, half stars. Brown dwarfs. And then you got like white dwarfs, and neutron stars, and magnetars, and pulsars. You know, for the universe being so vast, there's only a couple kind of stellar and planetary creatures out there. I think this apartment is surrounded by assassins. Now, who would be bad at me and why? Okay, when I left this article last time, I was saying that red giants are dying stars in the late stages of life that are exhausting the nuclear fuel that makes them shine. They've expanded in size and are shedding their outer layers into space. Huh? I mean, like a caterpillar to a butterfly. Fly on, my sweet angel. Fly on through the sky. The current best explanation. Well, Sounds like I'm talking to somebody dishonest. Hold on. Here's my current best explanation for my behavior. Suggests, and it's usually a long, complicated explanation. Suggests the plasma balls were launched by an unseen companion star. According to this theory, the companion would have to be in an elliptical orbit that carries it close to the red giant's puffed up atmosphere every 8.5 years. Oh, that's interesting. As the companion enters the bloated star's outer atmosphere, it gobbles up material. This material then settles into a disk around the companion and serves as the launching pad for blobs of plasma. Man, this all sounds silly, but it's very scary, I know. I feel for my life. This is due. All right, so as the companion enters the bloated star's outer atmosphere, it gobbles up material, interstellar medium, interstellar medium, dust, rocks, magic relics, spaceship husks, old statues made from Venusian marble, Martian golem spider legs, old abandoned Starbucks deep space posts. There's all sorts of junk out there. So this material then settles into a disk around the companion, and then it creates its own mini little solar system. <laughs> and it serves as a launching pad for blobs of plasma, which travel at roughly a half a million miles an hour. I would sure love to see this video. Sounds like you guys have found some fascinating science. You mean to tell me you found a red giant as a companion star, and together they shoot huge cannonballs of plasma and stuff? That is one mighty interesting tale you're selling me, buddy. Can I see some proof? Photographs of this process would be wonderful. Uh-oh. Think that Honk Torn was the assassin signal to barge in and take my life. Oh no. This star system could be the archetype to explain 
a dazzling variety of glowing shapes, uncovered by Hubble, that are seen around dying stars, called planetary nebulae. Researchers say a planetary nebula is an expanding shell of glowing gas expelled by a star late in its life. We knew this object had a high-speed outflow from previous data, but this is the first time we are seeing this process in action, said Rag Evendra Sahai of NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. And did you know that it's in Pasadena, California? That dude was the lead author of the study. I don't know why I just assumed that name was male. Man, we suggest that these gaseous blobs produced during this late phase of a star's life help make the structures seen in planetary nebula. Okay, I'm still tripped up. You got a star? Eh, another kind of a star that hook up once every 8.5 years to shoot cannonballs. Maybe it's like stellar 4th of July. Maybe that Hydra celebrating their freedom. From who or what, I don't know. Hubble observations over the past two decades have revealed an enormous plexity and diversity of structure in planetary nebula. The telescope's high resolution captured knots of material in the glowing gas clouds surrounding the dying stars. Astronomers speculated that these knots were actually jets ejected by disks of material around companion stars that were not visible in Hubble images. Wait, what? Wait, what? Wait, what? Wait, what? I guess you're going to have to stay tuned for part two as we continue to try and figure out what the hell they're talking about. It seems pretty weird for science. It seems pretty weird. Even for science. Hit the button, baby. Stay cool. This is a Thor News presentation. Thor News presents Party Game Time. Goodness gracious, great cannonballs of fire. Holy smokes, does this story seem appropriate for today? The Hubble detects giant cannonballs shooting from a star. Alright, so what it looks like here is we got a sun kind of like ours, except it's a little more orange. Looks like it's got a neutron star buddy that likes to hang out in the place of the sun baby, and then it acts as defense for the sun. Shooting at bad guys? Or good guys? Or space ducks? I don't know, man. This is the scenario for plasma ejections from Pink V Hydra. Why is it always gonna be Hydra? Dude, I feel like I've been sitting up in a high tree, and Hydra's just been firing cannonballs at me right and left. 2016 is hell here. You know what I'm saying? Great balls of fire. NASA's Hubble Space Telescope has detected